Okay, so someone asked, can a form be used to customize a query? And the answer is yes. Just as you use a form as a medium to modify the data in a table, you can also use a form to modify a query. And the reason why you do this is because queries, just like tables, are not user friendly. You really don't want your end users staring at a query and trying to make changes to it. So instead you have a query running behind the scenes with a form interacting with it. So the user interacts with the form, the form interacts with the query, and then the user gets their results. So we already kind of brushed up on this idea, uh, depending on where I put this in the series, we already have the form for all reports. You click on a button and it runs a query. That's a little bit different because that query has criteria that is not changing. In that case, it does have like a date function that, ch that changes, but it's always saying what the date is. What we want is we want customization where you can change multiple fields. So how do we do this? Well, let's start by creating the form and then we'll go to the query and then we'll have to come back to the form. Uh, unfortunately, you have to do at least a little jumping back and forth. So create blank form. Let's get rid of these defaults that I don't like. And it really isn't just, in this case, it's really not preference because you want to control how the uh, end user is interacting with your data. So we go to design view, design, properties, format. And again, it's the navigation button, no, record selector, no, and not as important, but I like to get rid of the sizeability too. Now, what we want is we want there to be fields, specifically combo boxes, drop down boxes, that then feed into a query that we have not created yet. So we click on combo box, we choose this, and it gives us two choices. I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query. That's what we want. If you notice, we didn't actually do a data link what we like we normally did because we're not modifying the record. We're taking this information and then depositing it or transferring it into the query, and then the query goes out. So the query will need to be linked to, to the table as far as a data, uh, data source, but this doesn't have to be. So I want the combo box to get values from another table or query. Next, we're actually going to use employee directory. And the reason for it is the ticket tracker table, which I'll review in a minute, the field of associate is pulled from the employee directory. So if I was to use the ticket tracker table directly, if there's 20 tickets from Barry Burton, then you're going to have 20 entries for Barry Burton. And you don't want that. You want each number, uh, each name represented once. So we want to choose employee directory. Next. All right, we want the employee name. Next. Can have it be ascending by name. Next. Expand that a little bit just in case any of the names are bigger. Next. And then finish. You can take this, move it up there, but it really doesn't matter. That's just layout. And like I said, I'm really not focusing on aesthetics. You can shrink this a little bit up if you want, made it a little bit big. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have a button that's going to say run query. But like I said, we can't do that yet because we don't have the query. So unfortunately, to make this work, you have to hop back and forth a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this, and we'll call this custom form. close that we're not going to create the custom query so create so at the top menu create query design like I said you can close this I find it just to be clutter now we're not going to use the same table we're not using the employee directory because employee directory each name is only once and that's what we want for the form because we want to see Leon's name once Barry's name once Jill's name once 
the query, we want it to interact with the ticket tracker because this is the data that we want the query to deal with. Your data does not have to match mine. What you, you just need to, when you run the query, you just want to make sure that the results, the criteria you've selected match your underlying table. So if you want to pause the video and take a couple minutes to do data entry, that's fine. Um, case number is, is auto number, so that don't worry about that. The actual customer name does not matter. The actual customer last name does not matter. The associate kind of does because, like I said, you're going to query based on associate, so you want to make sure you're getting the right results. Incident date also kind of matters because we are going to search by date. But again, you don't have to have the exact date as me as long as your query results match your table. Incident detail is just filler. Incident resolution is just filler. And case status, we will check that as well. But again, yours don't have to match mine. Just make sure that when you run your query, the criteria you selected is representative of what's in the table. OK, so we close that. So we take Ticket Tracker, and we just drag it here into the query. Select everything, drag it down here. So right now, the query is searching for everything. Well, that's not what we want. We said that we're going to have criteria be fed into the query. So if I criteria for associate name, right click and choose build. So we're, this is the DB tutor, 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 well, can't speak this morning. Go down to forms, all forms and custom form because that's the form we just made. Based on the three things here, I know for a fact it's combo zero because that's the only combo box. So double click on that. So what you're saying is take the value in the combo box for the form and filter associate name based on that. So let's save this. We'll call this custom query. And we'll close it. So now you have a linkage between the query and the ticket tracker, the form and the employee directory, but not between the form and the query. Because like I said, you really can't do that until you have a query. So let's go back to our form. So custom form, design view. And now we just got to add a button. And I don't think I usually use the automated wizard, but we will in this time. So miscellaneous, run query, because I believe I already showed you how to do that manually. So next, which query is it? It's custom query. So like I said, we couldn't make that selection until the query is created, but we couldn't really create the query until we had the field that was being based on. So you kind of a chicken or the egg situation where you have to kind of jump back and forth between both objects. So custom query next. This is just saying, what do you want the button to look like? We'll have it be text. It'll say run query. You can change that if you want. Next. This is just the name of the object. Command to finish. So that should do it, at least for the beginning. We should now be able to select a name, run the query, and get the results. So let's save this, go back to view. See how there's only one name, one of each name? If we had used the ticket tracker as the source, these names would have been repeated for as many times as, uh, is in, as they have tickets. So that's why you want to use the employee directory. So let's choose Jill Valentine and click on Run Query. So here we get four cases from Jill Valentine. So what we do now is we go to the underlying uh, ticket tracker because this is the source, and let's make sure it matches. So Jill has one, two, three, four. Okay. It's Mato, Yukateru, Rebecca, and Aru. Mato, Yukateru, Rebecca, and Aru. So it's working. Uh, yes, you can like sort and filter on these. 
I don't like to. Um, it might give you an artificial sense of what's out there, so I try not messing with the underlying data like that. I find that's really the point of queries. So you certainly can filter. You don't have to eyeball it like I did. Kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, but I, I try not messing with the underlying data like that. So it's working. So let's close. Let's close. Let's try again. So let's try Barry. Run query. We've got four for Matt, Rebecca, Claire, and John. So let's again go back to our ticket tracker. So Matt, Rebecca, Claire, and John, and this is for Barry. So Matt, Rebecca, Claire, and John. Perfect. So what if you want two criteria? So we're on custom form, go to design, add another combo box. I want the combo box to get the values from another table. Now, this would be a little bit trickier because we really, if, if you're looking to do say open or closed, well, we really don't have a table that just has the words open and closed, that we have um, the text. So we really don't want to choose again from the table because if you have 100 cases that are open, it's going to say open 100 times. You don't want that. So I will type in the values that I want. So I mean, if you want, you could technically have a source table that just says open and close, but if there were many more statuses, it'd probably be worth it. But if you only have like two or three statuses, is it really worth creating extra complexity uh, in your database? So I will type in the values that I want. Thing to keep in mind, though, is you have to get it exactly right. Oops, sorry, I hit enter. So back. And let's check to see if it's open. Oops. Oh, what we'll do is we'll actually cancel this. Let's go to the ticket tracker. So closed and open. So it is with a D and it is a capital. So we can just delete that and redo that so we get the wizard again. So I want to type in the values that I want. Open. Closed. Next. Finish. And save. Okay, so we have. I'm just arrowing this over. Like I said, I really don't care too much about layout, but. Okay, so we save this, and now we have to go make the corresponding change in the query. So we'll close that. And if you wonder why I keep closing, sometimes access will give you an, um, an error saying that you're trying to make something that's linked to something that's open. You can't do that. So I usually just close as long as you make sure that it's to save your, your work. So let's now go back to the custom query. We'll right click and design view and keep that in mind. That's not arbitrary because if you double left click, it actually runs the query. So you, you're going to want to right click and choose design, particularly if a query that's running through like thousands and thousands of thousands of records, you might suddenly find yourself locked up waiting for that to run. So make sure you're right clicking and choosing uh, design. OK, so this time we're looking at case status. So here's case status and we're going to do a very similar uh, process. Go to build. Again, we're in the DB tutorial database. We're going to be looking at a form. We're going to be looking at all forms. And we're looking at the custom form. And this time, as you can see, there's more. So you have to be careful that you don't grab the wrong one. But I know for a fact there is combo zero and now there's combo five. The better thing to do is to really rename the object so it's meaningful to you. But we've already kind of discussed that. 
So now the value of combo 5 is going to be dropped into the case status. And just save, close, go back to custom form. Now that one you can double click. Also because we do want to run it. We're not designing it this time. We already have the, query, the button that runs the query, so no matter how much we add here, that functionality stays the same. So let's choose Barry, and now let's choose Closed, and let's choose Run Query. He has three closed queries. Let's see if that's uh, three closed tickets. So Ticket Tracker. So Barry has, so this one is closed. This one is closed, and this one is closed. So the other ones are Leon, Jill, 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 Leon. So indeed, he has three closed, and the three that are closed are for Matt, Rebecca, and Claire. Matt, Rebecca, Claire. I suppose I could just be looking at the case numbers. All right, so it is definitely working. We can try a couple more, like we could do, say, does Jill have any open cases? Maybe you're a supervisor and you want to see if people are me meeting um, the time limit, like the SLA, as some people refer to it, the service level agreement. Are they getting the work done in the time that's agreed upon? So you'd want to look at the open cases. So run query. Jill has one open case for Aru. So we go to Ticket Tracker. And here's all the open cases at the bottom. I just added them today. And sure enough, Jill has one open case for Aru. So that's about it, I think. Uh, you can just keep building on that as much as you want. You can add... Uh, more fields, but like I said, just be very careful about where you're selecting this field from because this field, the data source, is not necessarily the data source of the query itself. The query is always going out to the ticket tracker, whereas this, uh, the, the form can actually be pulling from several different data sources. So this top one pulled from the employee directory. This one is manually entered. Um, date would be a little bit more difficult. Uh, you might actually maybe come up with a table. If you create a date, if, if you create a date field for uh, a date search, then it brings up like a menu. It brings up a, a, a built-in calendar. So maybe that would be the best way to go with that one. But anyways... So I think that's about it for uh, this tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know.